Praise the Lord. The Lord is good. And all the time. Yes, we thank God for this season. Amen. Let me ask the worship team to come forward. And uh, let's uh, start off with this very prophetic song the Lord has laid on my heart. If you could rise on your feet, it wouldn't be a bad idea. That with God, where Jesus is, all things are possible. Yes, that even men can gather to pray. Men can gather at the feet of Jesus. Men can seek the face of God. Yes, husbands can come to seek from the one that created them, from the one that formed them, and the one that formed the family. And start. Yes. 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 Awari Yesu Yona Vinsika Awari Yesu Yona Vinsika Awari Yomoyo Yona Vinsika Awari Yomoyo Yona Vinsika Yes, declare that where he is, that all things are possible. Yes, everything. Awadi Yesu, Yona be in Zika. Yes, Elema Shekaya Baba. In Zika. Awadi Yesu, Yona be in Zika. Lord, we know that you are in this place. And indeed, Lord, we are gathered in this place to call upon thy name. Thy name that is a strong tower. Yes, we the righteous run to it and we are saved. And we are safe, Abba Father. Yes, we come to you, the rock of ages. Yes, to you, the unchanging God, the unchanging Messiah. You who lay down your life for us. We've come to you this afternoon afternoon in the name of Jesus to call upon you. Lord, this week, Abba Father, even as we focus on impacting the men, impacting the heads of the families, impacting, oh God, yes, 
in the name of Jesus. We plead with thee, O God. Yes, Lord, that you will visit with us, O God. Visit with the men in the name of Jesus. Visit with the young men. Visit with the children, the boys, O God, in the name of Jesus. Just lift up someone. Lift up a husband. Lift up a son. Lift up an uncle. Lift up a grandfather. Just declare that with the Lord, all things are possible. With Jesus, yes, Lord, this afternoon, even as we gather for this lunch hour, in the name of Jesus, your word says that whatsoever two or three agree upon, it shall be done for them in heaven. Lord, we agree that this week there will be salvation, O God. This week there will be deliverance, O God. This week there will be impartation, O God. This week that something in the heavens shall break loose and in the name of Jesus, manifestation shall be here on, the, on this earth, O God, in this cathedral, O God, to the men in Kampala, O God, to the men in Uganda, O God. Lord, there is that man that, is, that has gotten a bus to come to Kampala for this conference. Lord, we declare that they are not the same. Yes, we declare that in Diocese of Kampala, the men are not the same. The fathers are not the same. The sons are not the same. Yes, even in the name of Jesus, in the province of you, Church of Uganda, Lord, we declare that the men are not the same. Lord, you raise an army. Raise an army. Raise an army, we pray. Raise an army, we pray in the name of Jesus. Raise an army. Raise an army, O oh God. Raise an army. Raise an army in the name of Jesus. There's an enduring promise from the Lord. In Isaiah 46, verse 3 and 4, he says, Listen to me, you descendants of Jacob, all the remnant of the people of Israel, you whom I have upheld since your birth and have carried since you were born, that even to your old age and gray hairs, I am he, that I am he who will sustain you. Hallelujah. That I have made you and I will carry you. I will sustain you and I will rescue you. Praise the name of the Lord. This afternoon we want to declare to the Lord that it is you. It is you our sustainer. It is you who made us your creator. It is you that carries us. You are our bearer. Underneath are the everlasting arms. Underneath are the everlasting arms. In the name of Jesus. It is you that sustains. You are our sustainer. Oh my father, my God. Sustain a man. Sustain a woman. Sustain a daughter. Sustain a, a son. Yes, in this season, sustain us in the name of Jesus. When wickedness has raged against us, Lord, we speak a sustaining power in the name of Jesus. Sustain us by your spirit, O oh God, we pray. In the name of Jesus, he says that I will rescue you. Lord, there are many that are trapped. There are many that are spiritually blind. There are many that are caged in prisons. Lord, let there be a release. Let chains be broken broken. Let chains be broken. In the name of Jesus, you are the chain breaker. You are the destiny changer. You are the mighty God. Lord, we pray. Will you change a destiny? Will you realign a destiny this week? In the name of Jesus. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, our Father. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Let's have our seats. The Lord is good. And all the time. And that's his nature. Amen and amen. As introduced by my sister, Reverend Lovisa, my name is Elon Katweheyo. And it's a great joy and privilege to be together this afternoon according to God's design and purposes that I am here. And I thank God for the opportunity to minister uh, in his word. Yes, this is day two of the men's prayer conference, the fourth men's prayer conference. Let's give the Lord a mighty hand clap of praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank God for the Alabaster Ladies Conference, which ended yesterday. I got to 
be reliably informed because my queen was at the luncheon that they were overwhelmed by numbers. And let it be so, even us as men, amen, that we shall be overwhelmed with numbers, hallelujah, of men. Our theme for this week is pursue and overtake. I am not the expositor, the expositor who come this evening at five o'clock, uh, the right Reverend Dr. Henry Luke Orombi, who's already in town, hallelujah. This evening at five, you want to be here, and you want to invite a man. You want to invite a nephew. You want to invite an uncle, a father, a husband. But our theme is from 1 Samuel 30, verse 8. I'll make a comment, and then I'll get to our, our focus for this, this lunch hour. 1 Samuel 30, here we see David and his men returning to Ziklag, and they found that, that Ziklag had been burned. Everything in it had been looted, including the women, the wives, the children, including David's two wives and his, you know, everything had been taken. And uh, verse 4, we see that David and his men wept aloud until they had no strength left to weep. They wept. It was a desperate situation. And I know even as we are gathered this afternoon, there are many things that are pressing hard on us. Whether it is the economy, whether it is uh, our spiritual state, as individuals, as families, and as a nation. You know, there are many things that talk about the family unit. There are many things that, uh, that, have, that, that the enemy has, has taken, has, has, has taken over, has, has uh, you know, overturned, has, has changed the order. You know that God made man and woman, husband and wife, but now we see that a new order has come. And it doesn't stop at that, and then you find a man who marries a crocodile. You know, I mean, th many things have happened in Uganda and beyond. So we see verse, verse 6, David was greatly distressed because the men were talking of stoning him. He, as a leader, you know, they were saying, now you're not doing anything. But we see something, verse 7, David says to Abiathar the priest, the son of Ahimelech, bring me the effort. Bring me the effort. Abiathar brought it to him. Effort signified the Lord's presence and all. Yeah? So David inquired of the Lord. That's our verse 8 and our theme. Friends, men, even the ladies, it is a season of inquiring from the Lord. And inquiring from the Lord is not just, let me just put this, it's not just for this season. But in this season, we are, the Lord is reminding us that we need to inquire of him. Before making that business deal, before taking that step, before purchasing that property, before attacking, before doing whatever it is, we must, we need to inquire of the Lord. But otherwise, we ought to inquire of the Lord as a lifestyle in every step of the way. This morning, I was asking the Lord, what should I put on? And then I, I, I picked two neckties and said, Lord, which of these two? I mean, that aspect of, of, of every detail of your life. And the Lord is concerned. The Lord is interested in every detail of our lives. So the men's prayer conference, the fourth edition, is here. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. He says, David inquires, shall I pursue this raiding party? Will I overtake them? And then the Lord answered, say, pursue them, and you will certainly overtake them. And you will be able to recover all. You will succeed in the rescue. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. This week we are pursuing, please say after me, we are pursuing, we are overtaking, and we are recovering all. We are recovering all that the enemy has robbed from us. That the enemy has taken away. His three-point agenda still stands. That he comes to steal, to kill, and destroy. Whatever he has stolen, that is ours. We are recovering it all. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. So the conference is going to offer us as men a safe space to come together. 
to share, to challenge one another, iron sharpening iron, to sharpen one another. But also, the other two objectives is spiritual grounding that will be grounded in the Lord. We will hear from the Lord and from different ministers this week. But also that we will take up our place as leaders in our families, wherever God has positioned us. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. I needed to give that bit of background, having been given the opportunity. By God's grace, I lead the team for a men's prayer conference, and God has blessed the cathedral with a beautiful team, a dedicated team, uh, that is, and we'll introduce them as we go along. We want to look at determined to know Christ alone. Determined to know Christ alone. When you talk about being determined, you have made up your mind. It is a conscious decision. It is not, you know, you don't just chance on it. No, no, no. You have determined so. And our text is from 1 Corinthians. Paul's first later to the Corinthians chapter 2. Our focus is verse 2, but permit me read from verse 1 to verse 5. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Verse 1 to 5, it says, And so it was with me, brothers and sisters. When I came to you, I did not come with eloquence or human wisdom as I proclaimed to you the testimony about God. This is Paul writing, yeah? To the Corinthians, the church at Corinth. In verse 2, he says, For I resolved to know nothing for I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I came to you in weakness with great fear and trembling. My message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power so that your faith might not rest on human wisdom, but on God's power. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. When we read from verse 1, Paul reminds the Corinthians that when he first came to their city or to that church there, he did not present the gospel to them with lofty speech. He did not present the gospel to them with eloquence or human wisdom. He did not rely on his experience. That is, if, that, you know, the experience he had gotten. He did not rely on what, what he knew. He did not rely on self. But he relied on the spirit as we're going to see the coming few minutes. He says, in other words, he did, not call, he did not call attention to himself by performing feats of verbal gymnastics. He did not, he, he, he didn't come to woo them with just words, as sometimes you find, you know, especially around times of campaigns and what. Or as some entertainers do, or, and they did even in that day. He did not woo them with a display of his great personal wisdom. Orators of that era were much like entertainers. And Paul did not want to confuse the compelling truth of the gospel with mere entertainment. Friends, the gospel has power. The gospel leads to salvation. Praise the name of the Lord. The gospel does not need enticement. And that is what Paul is writing about right here. So when we see in verse 2 where he says that I resolved to know nothing else while I was with you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. He says that Paul, Paul made a cautious choice. He made a cautious choice not to display his knowledge about anything at all except for Jesus Christ and his crucifixion. 
Friends, the power that we live in, the church is established on Christ as the rock, as the foundation. Because there's no other foundation that is laid apart from Christ. Amen. And the resurrection is the reason why we are, why we believe what we believe. Because Jesus Christ died and rose from the dead. Unlike any other, you know, prophet of any other religion. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. It is not that Paul did not know about anything else. Paul actually knew. We know his story. You know, as, it, as is recorded, uh, let's get to Philippians. When we turn to Philippians chapter 3, Philippians chapter 3, verse 4 and 5, and we'll also read another text in the Acts of the Apostles. Philippians chapter 3, verse 4 and 5. Okay, let me get there. Philippians. Okay, chapter 3, verse 4 and 5 says that, that though I myself have reasons for such confidence, that if someone else thinks they have reasons to put confidence in the flesh, I have more. That I was circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, in regard to the law, a Pharisee, as of zeal, persecuting the church, as Oh, as for righteousness based on the law, found faultless. That is the Paul. He had that experience. He know that he didn't have it. You know, sometimes we, 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 we want to bring in our experience from, from even our vocations. Yes, our vocations are great. But when it comes to matters of the faith, it is faith. Praise the name of the Lord. At least for this, maybe let me also read Acts of the Apostles, chapter 17, where Paul is, is sharing Acts of the Apostles 17, and I read from verse 1. Paul giving, his, he says that when Paul and his companions had passed through Amphipolis and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica, where there was a Jewish synagogue, as was his custom. Paul went into the synagogue or uh, went into the synagogue and on three Sabbath days he reasoned with them from the scriptures explaining and proving that the Messiah had to suffer and rise from the dead that this Jesus this Jesus I am proclaiming to you is the Messiah he said some of the Jews were persuaded and joined Paul and Silas as did a large number of God-fearing Greeks and quite a few prominent women. We see that, that he reasoned, he shared, he proclaimed Jesus Christ as the Messiah. And, and he says that, that indeed, because of reasoning Christ Jesus as the Messiah, proclaiming this, he says for three Sabbath days, he reasoned with them from the scriptures, not from anywhere else, not from his experience, not from human understanding, not from philosophy, but from the scriptures. Praise the name of the Lord. And for these particular people, Paul wanted them to be sure that they weren't attracted, they weren't attracted to, to mere entertainment. It wasn't about uh, motivational speech. You know, we live in a day when motivational speech has taken it. You know, when we are preaching the gospel, the number will be few. But if we had invited a motivational speaker here, he would see the numbers. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. We must focus on the word. We must determine to know, to preach, to live by Christ and Christ alone. And we'll be looking at the three aspects of this text in First, in first Corinthians chapter 2, verse 2. The first aspect I see here is the place of resolution. Resolution. That even as we gather this week as men, even as the ladies also will be joining in, we must resolve. I'm reminded of Daniel chapter 1 verse 8, where Daniel resolved not to defile himself with the food that was offered to idols. We must resolve. 
Paul resolved. For I resolved. That's verse 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 2. I resolved. Must make up our mind. That yes, there will be opportunity to share other things. There will be a time when you know you would want to, sh- to add in some, but resolve. Make that resolution. That is a starting point. Temptations notwithstanding. Challenges notwithstanding. Resolve. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Resolve to follow Jesus. Resolve to know Christ alone. The second aspect there that we see, the second aspect there that we see is the aspect of the priority. Nothing while, to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ. To know nothing, I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except to know nothing, nothing else. Nothing else matters. Nothing else can satisfy. There's nothing that can take his place. Jesus talking to his disciples, he told them that if you do not hate your father, your mother, your brother, your sister, your wife, even your children, and even your own life, you cannot be my disciple. And the point there, when you read the text, it's not about hating in terms of hatred, but it's about who do you love supremely? Who is the priority? If Jesus says this, and maybe someone else say, your, your father says the other that is contrary to what Jesus says in the word, who do you obey? Who do you listen to? And yes, there's a consequence. There's a consequence of obedience. There's a consequence for disobedience. Praise the name of the Lord. So who is the priority? What is our priority? And the third aspect points, I, I need to mention that actually these three points, one leads to the other. The resolution and the priority, and then who do we focus on as a priority? And that is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ and him crucified. Jesus Christ and the price that he paid for us. Praise the name of the Lord. The price that he made, you know, leaving the heavens, as Philippians 2 says, that he did not count it, you know, he didn't count equality with God, but he came down, he left the glory of the heavens and came to be a man. And then he says that, therefore, he has been given a name that's above every other name. That at the mention of the name Jesus, every knee bows and every tongue confesses that he is Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Why should, we, why should we determine to know Christ alone? Because Christ Jesus, he is the way. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. And indeed, no one comes to the Father except through him. He is, that is it. Live alone this age of relative truth. That is the truth. He is the truth. Nothing can change that. Praise the name of the Lord. And indeed, even as Hebrews 13, 8 says that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday. He's the same today and he's the same forevermore. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Paul writes still in the Philippians chapter 3. He says that I want to know Christ. I want to know Christ. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection. And to enjoy the fellowship of his suffering. Paul had encountered Jesus Christ, as we all know, on that road when he was going to persecute the church. And he asked, who is this Lord? I know that a number of us come to church. A number of us have grown up in church. We have been baptized, confirmed, and, you know, wedded in right here at the cathedral. But you have not encountered Jesus Christ. You have not gotten to a place where Paul made a total turnaround from persecuting to preaching the same gospel that he persecuted. Maybe you may not be persecuting like Paul, but your, does your life show that you actually follow after Jesus Christ? Does your life show that you know Christ alone? And I pray that this afternoon, I pray that this week, if anything, that we will encounter Jesus Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. That we'll encounter Christ Jesus. 
My prayer and our prayer, even as we, we've put together this conference, the Lord has, you know, set a banquet before us, is that we will come and dine with him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That we will determine to know Christ alone. Christ the supreme king. Christ the risen Lord. Christ who is able, whoever encountered Jesus Christ did not remain the same. Whoever had an encounter, whoever came in contact with Jesus, even that woman that had the issue of blood, who says that if only I could touch the helm of his garment, I will be healed. And indeed, she was healed. The Lord is calling us to, 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 to raise our faith, to be expectant of that which is speaking to us. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. I thank God for the opportunity that he has given to us in this season. I thank God that I've shared my testimony a number of times. But while a telecom engineering student at a university, the Lord said, come. He said, come and serve. Come and serve me. And I was my third year. I was enjoying my course. It was my choice. And yes, I, I did well. I finished that course. But the Lord had spoken. And I say that I want to follow Christ and Christ alone. I am determined to know him, to preach him, to serve him all the days of my life. Praise the name of the Lord. And see this far, the Lord has brought me. It's 10 years now. Last July, I was celebrating the 10 years since, since I made that decision. Praise the name of the Lord. And he has been faithful. Amen. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. I want us just to bow our heads in prayer. Even as we, we join in this song, in the secret, in the quiet place, I know that the Lord is there. I want to know you, and I want to let that be your prayer, even as we wind up in sharing, that you will purpose, you will long for, you will yearn to know the Lord. You will desire, you will have that hunger, that unquenchable thirst to long for the Lord. He says that blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Will you speak to the Lord even as we just join that song? Yes, Lord, in the secret, in the quiet place, you are there, O God. In the secret, in the quiet place, yes, Lord, you are there. In the sequence you are there. In the secret, in the choir, I will await only for you. Because I want to know you more. Lord, I want to know you more. I want to know you touch you. I want to see your face. I want to know you more. Lord, I want to know you. I want to know you. I want to hear your voice. I want to touch you I want to see your face I want to know you more you could be here this afternoon and you have never made a decision to follow Jesus Christ as your savior and lord I want to give you that opportunity right now I want you if you're there just where you are just lift that hand to the Lord and say Lord I want to surrender my life to you you have never made that decision to invite Christ into your life. Maybe you did so a while back. Maybe you're even online. And you're saying that I want to know. I want to determine to know Christ and Him alone. And it starts with that decision. It starts with that decision, friends. Maybe you've known Him, but you have strayed off. Let me pray with you. Lord Jesus, I thank you for this afternoon. I thank you 
for that brother or sister who has strayed, who has not yet invited you in their life. Lord, will you come into their life? Will you, Holy Spirit, make them the kind of person you want them to be? Thank you for dying on the cross for their sins. Thank you, Lord, that you are on the throne and you reign and you are God. In Jesus' name, amen. Lord, even those that have received you, Lord, our prayer is that we will determine, we will make that cautious choice, decision to walk, to walk with you, to know you, to cling to you. We shall purpose to know you, Christ Jesus, and you crucified. Nothing else matters. Nothing else satisfies. Yes, indeed, yes, Amara. Yes, Amara. Yes, Jesus, you satisfy. Lord, that we will hold on to you in all times, in all seasons. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. I want to know you. I want to hear your voice. I want to know you more. Lord, I want to touch you. I want to touch you. Thank you, Lord, for your word that has clearly come to us this afternoon. Your word of encouragement, your word that calls us to resolve, to make up our minds, to desire to know you and you alone crucified. And Lord, we make that commitment this afternoon that through you, Spirit of the living God, you will give us grace to resolve to want to know nothing else except Jesus and him crucified. He is the way, he is the truth, he is the life. And so, Lord, we pray that you will give us grace to resolve. Paul did resolve, Daniel resolved, and many that have gone ahead of us made that resolution. And so as we sit at your feet this afternoon, we want to bring repentance, Lord, because many times as winds of things blow us about, of possessions and all those things, at times we, we have found ourselves resolving to want to possess and take these things and forgetting that you are that that matters most. You tell us in your word, Lord, to seek, to search for you and your righteousness. And all these other things will be given to us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for that reminder this afternoon. And so we ask that you give us grace, keep us steadfast in that resolution that we have made to want to know you and you alone. To want to esteem you, to exalt your holy name. Thank you for a brother that has emptied of himself. We ask that you fill him to the brim. And so, Lord, we receive that message with open hearts, and we ask that you will water it in our hearts, Spirit of the living God, to cause it to bear fruit, fruit that will last to the very end, that only your name will be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Can we give the Lord a mighty hand clap? Hallelujah, hallelujah.